The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, Lord. There was one of the Pharisees called Nicodemus, a leading Jew, who came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who comes from God, for no one could perform the signs that you do unless God were with him. Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, unless a man is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said, How can a grown man be born? Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, unless a man is born through water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be surprised when I say you must be born from above. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. That is how it is with all who are born of the Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to your Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel passage we read of Nicodemus coming to Jesus, being a teacher. It wouldn't have been a very popular act for him to come to Jesus because all the others were against the Lord. And that is why the scripture tells us that he comes to Jesus by night, keeping himself away from the eyes of everyone else. He comes to Jesus by night. It is also a symbolic depiction of the darkness within his, his own self. And we read, he comes to the Lord and he, and he asks him, and he tells him, we know that you are a good teacher. And Jesus answers, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And that's when Nicodemus brings out his question, how can we go back into our mother's womb? And Jesus is, is so clear about that. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. We are in this, the church is now in its journey towards Pentecost. And that is why the reading of today, it's in the church is now moving towards that mighty moment of the Pentecost, the most powerful moment of the Pentecost, the most essential moment of Pentecost. And that is what we prepare for. And the Lord is giving us the same message today he's giving Nicodemus. Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. And that is, that is our human dimension. That is from where we come. We come from our parents. We are born of our parents. And that will be of the flesh. And that, that dimension of ours is always visible in this world. What is born of the flesh is flesh. And therefore, we will always show signs of the flesh as well. We will always show signs from where we come of the flesh. I come from my parents. I'll show signs about my parents within me, in my characteristics, in my physical features, in the way I do things. Even today, there's so many elements of what I do. I, I, I come to realize as, as the years go by that these are things that my father did. And that is why I kind of have the same tendencies as well. Characteristics that were there in my father, knowingly or unknowingly, I start portraying it. Because I come from the flesh of my father. And so I'll show the signs of that all the time in whatever I do. But Jesus says, he makes a clear distinction and he says, what is born of the flesh is flesh. He doesn't end there, he says, but what is born of the spirit is spirit. What is born from above 
is from the Spirit. And that is what we always need to keep in mind because Jesus says, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. So I cannot be happy with just the journey I have made from the one of my flesh or from the one from whose flesh I've come. That is not the only journey I make in this world that might help me in my today and now. It might help me in this journey that I'm making over here. But Jesus says our journey is not complete here. He says the one who is born of the spirit is spirit. That is important. And that is why St. Paul would speak about this famously in Romans 8 verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh will set their minds on the things of the flesh. But the kingdom of God is not of this world. And therefore I cannot always set my mind on the things of the flesh. My, my intellect and my emotions and my spirituality cannot always be oriented towards the things of this world. It's a beautiful measuring mark for us as children of God. What kind of a person am I? Are my, is my mind always pertaining towards the things of the flesh and things of this world? That I'm not preparing myself for the kingdom of God because Jesus says, if you, no one can see the kingdom of God if you are not born from above. If you're not a person of the spirit, if you're not letting the spirit journey with you. And that is what the church is preparing us for even as we are moving towards Pentecost. True, at our baptism and our confirmation, we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit, but we cannot leave those as a moment of the past. Our experience with the Spirit has to be daily. It has to be on an ongoing experience that we have with the Spirit. If we do not have an ongoing experience with the Spirit on a daily basis, I will end up as being a person of the flesh. My thoughts will reflect a person of the flesh. My desires will reflect the person of the flesh. The way I, I think of things, the way I plan things, it will all be like a person of the flesh. And that's why St. Paul says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. So it's good to, to ask ourselves today, what are my thoughts? What do I think of all the time? What do I desire all the time? What kind of thoughts pass through my mind? What kind of desires does my body have? Is it reflecting the world and things of the flesh? Then I'm still of the flesh. My journey with the spirit has not taken place. And every day I'm meant to journey with the Spirit. And that is what the whole Feast of Pentecost, even as we are moving towards it, is reminding us. That is what happened with these apostles. That's why we have the reading, the first reading. Though they are persecuted, they are whipped, they are lashed. In spite of it, the scripture tells us they are now speaking with boldness about Jesus. Why? Because they are being led by the Spirit. It is now a journey with the Spirit. And that is what we should be doing as well. That journey with the Spirit. Not just for one day, not just for one week, not just for a moment when I'm in church. But all through the day, what's going on in my mind? Am I being led by the Spirit? Am I being led by the flesh? Because if I'm being led by the flesh, the Lord is very clear. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Lord Jesus, we live in this world. And at times it's hard in this world to be a person of the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit. Very often, we run behind success, comforts. Our relationships are of this world. And very often, we end up being people of the flesh, led by the flesh, with the desires of the flesh. But Lord, you have told us 
those who are born of the Spirit are Spirit. Give us the grace that this journey we have today might be led by the Spirit so that I prepare myself for your kingdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.